Hi, this is Dr. Ahmed. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about the uh, vasculature of the heart or the blood supply of the heart. So, as we know, uh, all of our bodies are, uh, is composed of uh, cells, okay? And the heart is no exception. The heart is composed of uh, uh, cells uh, lining the heart from the inside called the endocardium from muscular uh, uh, cells or muscle cells in the myocardium which is the middle layer of the uh, wall of the heart and all of these cells in the heart needs blood supply nutrients oxygen so we need uh, some arteries to supply these uh, cells and some veins to drain wastes and uh, uh, carbon dioxide from these cells now in this lecture we are going to talk about the arteries of the heart or the blood vessels that supply the, the cells of the heart with uh, nutrients and oxygen so First of all, we have two main arteries uh, that supply the heart. These are called the uh, right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. I'm going to start talking about the right coronary artery. Remember that this is an overview. If you want to go into some details, you will find some more details, but this is an overview like before you start studying. So both of these arteries, left and right coronary arteries, arise from the aorta or from the first part of the aorta, which is the ascending aorta. Now, the right coronary artery, after it arises from the aorta, it will run in a sulcus or a groove between the right atrium and the right ventricle, which is here. This groove or sulcus is called the anterior atrioventricular sulcus because it's found between the atrium and the ventricle. Okay. Now, this right coronary artery will keep running in this sulcus until it reaches the margin of the heart or the right margin of the heart. In this area, it will give its first branch, which is called the uh, right marginal artery. Now, the right coronary artery gives multiple branches, but in this illustration, we will focus on the main branches of the right coronary artery, which is the first one is the right marginal artery. Now, after it gives the right marginal artery, it will continue posteriorly in the posterior atrioventricular groove, which is found here. Now, this is the right coronary artery. It keeps running between the right atrium and the right ventricle. And posteriorly, if you can see, it will give its terminal branch, which is called the posterior interventricular artery. Now, this artery is called posterior because it's found posteriorly in the heart, it's obvious. And interventricular because it's found between the left ventricle, which is here, and the right ventricle, which is here. This posterior interventricular artery runs in a sulcus or a groove called the in posterior interventricular sulcus because it's found between the two ventricles posteriorly. Okay. Now this is this illustration simplifies things uh, uh, further. Okay. So this is the aorta or the ascending uh, uh, aorta, which is the first part of the aorta. It gives the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery gives the right marginal artery, and continues posteriorly in the heart to give the posterior interventricular artery which runs in the posterior interventricular groove now the right the left coronary artery or the posterior interventricular artery may sometimes arise from the left coronary artery not not from the right coronary artery this happens in 20 to 25 percent of people but in the rest of the percentage let's say in 80 percent of people this posterior interventricular artery actually arises from the right coronary artery okay this is an overview of the right coronary artery. Now, let's go to the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery also originates from the ascending aorta. It runs between the pulmonary artery and the left auricle, starting like it starts running in the pulmonary between the pulmonary artery and the left atrium. Then it emerges in the anterior surface of the heart. After emerging, the left coronary artery will divide into two branches. Okay, two main branches. One is called the anterior interventricular artery. This artery actually runs in a groove that is between the right ventricle and the left ventricle. This groove, because it's found anteriorly and between the ventricles, it's called the anterior interventricular artery. Okay, it runs in a groove called the anterior interventricular groove. Now, this anterior interventricular artery have another name. Let's say it's uh, more common in clinical situations. It's called the left anterior descending or for short, LAD, okay? So LAD is the same as the anterior interventricular artery. Now this anterior interventricular artery will run to the apex of the heart and then wind around the apex of the heart and anastomose or meet with the posterior interventricular artery, okay? So there is an anastomosis or meeting point between the anterior interventricular artery and the posterior 
uh, interventricular artery okay now the other branch of the left coronary artery is called the circumflex artery it's called the circumflex because it winds or circles the heart okay the circumflex artery actually runs the same course as the right coronary artery so the right coronary artery kept running in the atrioventricular groove anteriorly and posteriorly the circumflex artery it does the same it runs in the atrioventricular groove between the atria and the ventricles anteriorly and then winds around the heart to run in the atrioventricular groove posteriorly okay now before it winds around the heart it will reach the margin of the heart or the left margin of the heart and it will give the left marginal artery so the right marginal artery is located at the right margin of the heart and is a branch of the right coronary artery and the left marginal artery is a branch of the left of the circumflex artery which is a branch of the left coronary artery now if we look at this picture we can see that the circumflex artery coming from the opposite side of the right coronary artery and it runs in the same groove which is called the atrioventricular groove because it's found between the atria and the ventricles okay now these photos uh, 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 summarizes the blood supply of each uh, uh, of each artery that we have mentioned okay so uh, let's look at this illustration first left coronary artery it gives the lad left anterior descending which is the uh, which is uh, the same as the interventricular artery anterior interventricular artery then it gives the circumflex artery the circumflex artery gives the left marginal artery so why it's drawn here as a branch of the left coronary artery because of variations it's uh, it's obvious okay the left coronary artery may give the left marginal artery or it might it might give the circumflex artery which then gives the left marginal artery so this these variations are okay now the right coronary artery supplies mainly the right atrium and the right ventricle it's obvious from its name it's right coronary artery so it supplies the right atrium anteriorly and posteriorly and the right ventricle anteriorly okay now the posterior interventricular artery supplies the right and left ventricles and the interventricular septum now the interventricular septum is a wall separating the left and right uh, uh, ventricles from the inside of the heart okay this interventricular septum is very important because if it uh, becomes deprived of a blood it will uh, we will uh, eventually have a hole between the left and the right uh, uh, ventricles which is very dangerous so uh, the posterior interventricular artery supplies the posterior surfaces of the right and the left ventricle which is around the posterior interventricular artery it also supplies the interventricular septum now the right marginal artery supplies the right ventricle and the apex of the heart anteriorly and posteriorly so this inferior part of the right ventricle anteriorly and posteriorly are supplied by the right marginal artery also the right marginal artery extends into the apex and supplies the apex of the heart the left marginal artery supplies mainly the left ventricle anteriorly and posteriorly okay the left circumflex artery supplies the left atrium the whole posterior uh, the whole left atrium and it supplies the superior aspect of the posterior surface of the left ventricle okay also we have the left anterior descending artery or the anter uh, anterior interventricular artery this supplies the rest of the right ventricle some of the anterior surface of the left ventricle and the anterior part of the interventricular septum so the anterior and posterior interventricular arteries supply the whole interventricular septum which separates the left and the right ventricles from each other i hope you enjoyed this lecture please like subscribe and share this video if you find it helpful and see you soon